Good morning, children. Hope you are doing well for the past week. So, let us start with our Sunday school. Let us begin with the word of prayer. Everyone, put your hand, close your eyes, follow teacher Cindy. Dear Lord, we thank you that we can still listen to your word. Open our heart. Open our mind so we, we can listen and understand what you want us to do in our life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Here I have a theme called true or false. So, can we give a guess? What is this? A polar bear, that's right. And how about this? It's a teddy bear. Are they the same? They are both bears. But which one is real? Which one is the true bear? This one. Good job. Another one. How about this one? Probably your mommy, your daddy owns a mobile phone. Yes. And how about this one? So which one is real? This one. Good job. So now you can tell the difference which one is the true, which one is the false item. So let us continue with our Sunday school. Here in our story today, we are going to listen to a story about a king, a young king, who is young and yet he knows and listens and obeys to God's word. So let us begin. This is the story of King Asa. He is a young king who trusts in God to help him. If you want to know more after Sunday school, you can take a look at the story. Here is the story from the Chronicles. This is King Asa. His daddy's name is King Abijah. Uh, he was the king of Judah. But during that time, King Abijah was a king who didn't listen and trust God. But it is very different with King Asa. So let us see what happened. When Asa appointed to be the king of Judah, he understand that his father and his grandfather were not listening to God. So they built a lot of temple for temples for other gods. And it makes God sad. So... The first thing that King Asa did when he became a king, he made sure he destroyed all these temples, all these stones that is being used to worship false god. Like just now we are playing a game about the true and the false. We know that there is only one true god. The rest of the gods are false gods. So that was what King Asa did. So basically, King Isa removed all the incense, all the altars, the idols that were being used by the people of Judah to worship false gods. He removed it and he encouraged people to return back to the one true God and obeying God's command. During the time of his reign, the kingdom was at peace. There was no war. So he was building the city. He is making sure that the people were prosperous. And then they are also very safe. They built all the strong walls to protect them from their enemies. They have very high towers to make sure that if there are enemies trying to come and capture them, they can see it from very far. And they also have very strong gates and bars to build and strengthen all their soldiers. The land is ours, said the king. 
because we have search and listen to God. That is what he said. And indeed, during that time, they were very prosperous and they were very safe because they are very, very strong. He also has a very, very strong army. There's about 300,000 men from the Judah and another 280,000 men from the tribe of Benjamin. So total is 580,000 men. They were very strong soldiers who are trained to use their bows to shoot arrows to the enemies. And they also were trained to use the shield to protect them. They were very, very strong and everyone knows that this city is very, very safe. And one day, there is this people, the king, uh, the people of Kush from Ethiopia, uh, with their king called King Zira, trying to come and attack the kingdom of Israel, especially Judah. Even though King Asa's soldiers were very strong, there were 580,000 of them, these people of Kush were even much stronger. They had 1 million fighters and 300 chariots. So imagine, they must be very, very strong and a very large army. However, one thing that is very interesting from King Asa, no matter how strong the city, the walls that he has built, and the kind of soldiers that he has, he always trust in, have trust in God more than having his trust in his soldiers or his walls or his cities. That is the one thing that is very unique from King Asa. He really trusts God to take care of everything in his life. So when the attack happened, he was not scared. He is ready to fight these people. Because to King Isa, no matter what, only the Lord can help him against his enemies. So as they were fighting in the battle, King Asa can only shout, We are relying on you, Lord. So imagine, it must be scary for King Asa and his soldiers. And yet, he knows, he believes that God is going to protect him no matter what. He really believes that God will protect him no matter what. And he will have victory because God is always on his side. Why is God always on King Asa's side? It's because you remember God, when he first reigned as a king, the first thing that he did is to return the people to God, to make sure that the people remember who is God and worship him. So when the battle began, they are ready to fight their enemies. And indeed, just as what King Asa said, the Lord gave him victory. You can see the enemy, even though they are a much bigger and stronger army, they were defeated and they quickly ran away. So from here you can see, for those who trust in God, God will always protect them. This victory that is given by God is because King Asa's heart is fully committed to the Lord only. And because of one king who believed and faithful to God, the rest of the nation is prosperous. So based on today's story, I want to remind you, no matter how small you are, how young you are, being faithful to God is very important to your journey in faith. So with this, let us 
memorize our memory verse together. It is taken from Psalm 119, verse 9 to 10. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. So let us repeat one again, once again. Psalm 119, verse 9 to 10. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. So I hope you remember to be faithful in God, to always remember that God will protect you. So now let's continue with our first catechism. Let us review the sum of the questions. Is there more than one true God? No, there is only one true God. In how many persons does this one God exist? In three persons. Name these three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. What is God? God is a spirit and does not have a body like man. Where is God? God is everywhere. Let us do our closing prayer together. Dear Lord, we thank you for you are a good God who loves us, who takes care of us, and always remember about us. Please help us, give us a faithful heart to listen and obey to your word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi everyone, this is the end of our Sunday school. Now let us sing our doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. God bless you. Again, again.